So special honours this week for two of the country's finest medical scientists, husband and wife team, Professor Salim Abdul Karim and Dr. Karaisha Abdul Karim. Now they run Caprisa, which is the Centre for the AIDS program of research in South Africa. The pair has been jointly awarded with the fourth Hideo Noguchi Africa Prize. Professor Salim Abdul Karim joins us now. Prof, congratulations. Um, we do love talking to you, but I have to ask, where is your, your partner in life and work? We were hoping to meet uh, Karesha. <laughs> well, very good evening to you and to all of the viewers. Yes, unfortunately, Karesha is attending another conference call with the, the World Health Organization. So she left me to do the honors with you. And of course, <laughs> thank you very much for the... The, the warm wishes. It's absolutely wonderful. Tell us exactly uh, what you won this award from Japan for. So the uh, Hideo Noguchi uh, Award is given once every five years. It's been given three times before, and this is in the medical research category. The award itself is named after Noguchi, who is a very famous Japanese physician who worked in the, you know, the most difficult parts of Africa against all the odds and made a huge impact on health in Africa. And so it recognizes him. It's, it's, a, it's an award from the Japanese government, so the decisions are made by the Prime Minister of Japan. And the award itself comes with a medal, a citation, and a prize of uh, roughly close on to one million dollars. The award itself will you know, be used for research and from our point of view it's just recognition and the importance of African science and that scientists in Africa are making globally important contributions worthy of this kind of prestigious award. So it's, it's both for your work around HIV AIDS and during the pandemic, am I correct? That's correct. Actually, they, they named three specific things in the citation. Uh, the first is our contributions in HIV, both in prevention and treatment. The second is our contributions to building capacity and increasing collaborations and bringing uh, multiple linkages from the globe across to help and work with researchers in Africa. And then the third is for our uh, scientific contributions in the COVID-19 pandemic. So they recognize all three of those contributions. And we know that you're, you're still very much at the forefront of research into HIV AIDS, and we've spoken often about uh, the new frontiers. What are you hoping to use the $1 million for? Well, right now, our focus is still on trying to prevent HIV infection in young women in Africa. And we're very fortunate that research that we started some 17 years ago is now bearing fruit. It just shows you the importance of playing the long game in terms of really staying with your, your cohorts and establishing uh, all of the infrastructure to do long-term research. And so one of the things we have discovered is an antibody that is very potent, one of the most potent in the world against HIV. And we are now developing it and have started clinical trials with it. The whole idea is, can we give an injection once every six months to young women to protect them from getting HIV? That's the goal. And if we, you know, this, this um, prize money will contribute to that effort. Well, I mean, antibodies and injections, that sounds a little bit like a vaccine to me, is it? Uh, so it's, so vaccines, the way in which vaccines work is that they often generate antibodies in addition to other parts of the immune system. Here, we are taking a slightly different approach in that instead of getting the body to make the antibodies, we are directly administering the antibodies. It's what is referred to as passive immunization. So whereas vaccines are active immunization, giving antibodies is passive immunization. Now, if it works, it gives us the basis on which to start thinking about 
what kind of vaccine will elicit these kinds of antibodies. And so it, it opens up a whole new world if we find in our research that these antibodies work in preventing HIV. And, and how did you discover these antibodies? Is it because of the, the, we have seen a few cases of people who seem to either self-cure or no matter the exposure, never get HIV? So we've been very fortunate. We started off you know, following people up, particularly young women, back in 2003, 2004. And this was a study we did with Professor Carolyn Williamson from UCT and Professor Penny Moore and Lynn Morris at the NICD. And it's a huge consortium. I mean, we're talking about over 200 scientists from throughout the world. But the bulk of the initial investigation was done right here in South Africa. And the way in which we did it is, as we've been following up individuals who've acquired HIV, we stored blood samples in our freezers. And so in 2010, when two groups in the US discovered a new technology that was enabled us to identify patients who had these kinds of antibodies, it gave us the basis on which to look into our own samples and find similar patients that make these rare individuals, that make these powerful antibodies against HIV. Now, all of this is being recognized by the Noguchi Award, but it, it, it uh, provides a springboard. It's the basis on which we build Africa's reputation, we build the infrastructure, we create the, the consortium of researchers and we bring the youngsters together to inspire them to do better. I mean, it sounds absolutely incredible. I have to ask about your working relationship. Uh, to have a life partner and then a partner in science, do you actually work quite closely together or do you run different parts of Caprisa? And if you work closely together, talk to me about that uh, relationship is do you sort of spark off each other scientifically or do you have very different approaches so Teresa and I have been working side by side for more than 30 years now uh, to give you some idea of how closely we work our offices are on either side of our common shared secretary. We have one secretary who <laughs> uh, deals with both Croatia and with me. And we would meet uh, several times in each day because we have so many projects that we are doing together. And Croatia has particular strengths in, in epidemiology and in understanding human behavior and in design, whereas I'm more focused in the lab. So we have our slight preferences, but about half of all our research that we do, we do together. And, uh, you know, we had a organizational consultant come to tell us, you know, how might we be better organized in Caprisa about a decade ago. And he took one look at us and he says, he can't understand how we haven't killed each other yet, given that we work so closely together, both <laughs> in, in the office and then go home and go out with each other. But it's a chemistry, and chemistry either works or it doesn't work. Uh, yeah, chemistry on many levels, clearly. And, and thank you so much for giving us an insight into your work. All strength to both of you as you try and uh, get to this new frontier of this sort of passive immunization plan that you've got. It sounds completely fascinating. Congratulations. What an amazing vision uh, and life work you have. That, of course, is Professor Salim Abdul Karim, head of Caprisa, the Center for the AIDS Program of Research in South Africa. And he, along with Koresha Abdul Karim, uh, that is his life partner, uh, they have just received uh, this massive award uh, from the government of Japan honoring their work, giving them a million dollars, which they're going to use for further HIV AIDS uh, research and hopefully developing new treatments.